seven things you need to do to become a professional photographer. That's what I'm gonna talk about today. Now, photography is a popular choice of profession for many people, but despite the perception of it being a glamorous career, in actual fact, it requires a lot of hard work, time, and effort. So how to become a professional photographer? Well, with over 20 years experience as a professional photographer myself, it's safe to say that I know a thing or two about what it takes to make it as a pro. Now to help you make a success of your journey, uh, I've broken down the seven key things that I think you need to help increase your chances of success. Number one, understand the basics. If you ask any professional photographer for advice on how to get started, they will tell you that it's essential that you understand the basics. And I'm not talking about simply knowing what aperture or shutter speed will be the best to freeze a moving car, for example. If you're thinking about going pro, you should already know those sort of things. I'm talking about understanding more than just the very basics. If your image is perfectly exposed at f11 at 300th, what would you have to do to reduce depth of field while maintaining the same exposure? Do you have an understanding of what makes a good picture? Have you fully grasped the importance of emotion and mood in an image? And those are absolutely vital. Can you tell a story with your photos? Now, if you haven't fully grasped these concepts, then you should definitely make sure that you take the time to get to grips with them. As a photographer, there is always more to learn. You should never be satisfied with what you know, as there will always be something else that can help you improve your photography. So keep practicing and look at work by other photographers and try to figure out what it is that makes their work so strong. Then go and practice some more. Aim to develop your style don't simply copy others. And then once you're confident you have a better understanding than before, the next step is to decide what you'd like to photograph. Number two, choose your niche. Do you have a panache for portrait photography or perhaps maybe more of a flair for food shots? Now, when it comes to becoming a professional photographer, specializing can be a good move. Not only will this give you focus, it will also help you figure out things like who your audience is, where and how to market yourself and your work, and what you should charge for your photography. Now, it will also allow you to focus and develop those key skills on that particular niche. Now, that being said, when you're just starting out, it can also be a good idea to just get out there and experiment with a number of different subjects. Don't limit yourself. Start with shooting things you enjoy, whether that be wildlife or street photography, but see where that takes you. Photographing different subjects will teach you a variety of different skills, and you never know when they might come in handy, but it's the things that you feel passionate about that will likely lead you to what interests you most in professional photography. Now, what do professional photographers earn? Now, at this point, I'm sure you're asking, what type of photography will make me the most money? Now, you can find a much more detailed explanation about this in our business course, but to help answer the question here, I've tried to provide a general idea for a few of the different types of photography. However, it's important to keep in mind that these figures are largely driven by supply and demand, and they can vary greatly depending on things like experience and even location. So let's look at some of those revenues. Wedding photographer's income. Well, the average photography income for a wedding photographer, I'd say would be approximately 45,000 pounds a year. That's about $58,000 a year. Typically, wedding photographers can make anywhere between 45,000 and 150,000 pounds per year. That's between 58,000 and 193,000 dollars per year. And if this sounds a bit vague, that's because it is. These figures fluctuate drastically depending on a number of factors, including how many weddings you shoot per year, what experience level you have, where you're based and your position in the market. Um, some wedding photographers can charge just $500, $800 a day. Some wedding photographers are $5,000 a day. So it really depends on your experience and your skill and how well you market and network yourself. 
The next genre of photography we could look at is portrait photography. So portrait photographer's income can be between £35,000 a year, that's $45,000. Most portrait photographers charge per session. That means their income depends largely on how many shoots they do each year. Now, for any photographer wanting to specialise in portrait photography, it's expected that you'll be able to make a minimum of £35,000 or $45,000 per year. But again, it depends on a large number of factors, such as how good you are at your marketing, what your uh, general demographic area is, and how much business you can generate. I would hope, as a portrait photographer, you can make a significant amount more. But remember, portrait photography has suffered more recently into the doldrums a bit as more people have started taking pictures themselves of their family and images with their iPhone so the portrait photography market has suffered. Generally speaking many portrait photographers work as wedding photographers as well or wedding photographers also work as portrait photographers and this is an area where you can develop your market by photographing a wedding and then later photographing the newborn baby, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all about marketing yourself, staying uh, in touch with your clients and building a good relationship with them. Okay, next genre of photography is product photographers. Now, product photography is one of the more lucrative areas, I would say, of photography. And I would say that a half-decent photographer in product photography should expect to be at least making £75,000 a year. That's about $96,000 per year. Uh, and they're typically charging per day or per job. And product photographers uh, can earn between $75,000 and £250,000 pounds a year or that's about $96,000 to $322,000 a year but again this is dependent on a number of factors such as experience the type of jobs the size of the clients and whether you're charging usage rights or not um, and to learn more about usage rights and how you can apply those to uh, product photography and commercial clients head over to our business photography course on Carl Taylor education and you'll uh, learn more about that topic on usage rights now, when looking at these sort of figures, it's important to keep in mind what you'd like to earn. If you're thinking about setting up on your own, you should be confident that you'll be able to make uh, more money than if you worked in a regular job working for someone else. And this is very important because there is a lot of stress and hassle uh, associated with being self-employed. And when you decide to be self-employed, you don't want all those extra hours and extra stress and extra hassle to earn the same amount of money you could have earned in another job. So keep that in mind. And we're actually going to be covering uh, earnings on photography and calculating what you need to earn in another video that will be coming uh, near in the near future. Right, uh, the next thing that you want to consider is um, getting the right equipment. Now I know we've only covered a few of the genres of uh, photography there. There are obviously many other areas of professional photography, but those are some examples just to give you an idea of the potential earnings. Now let's get back to this topic of getting the right equipment. Now this is quite important. Over the years, photographic equipment has become more accessible and more affordable than ever before. However, with so much on the market, it can be difficult to know what you really need to get started as a professional photographer. Now, this brings me back to my previous point. Choose your niche. Once you've decided what type of photography you want to do, you'll have a much clearer idea of what equipment you'll need to do it. Now, whatever area of specialization that you choose, it's important that you've got the right equipment for the job. Now, you wouldn't be happy if you went to the dentist and they used a toothpick instead of a sickle scaler. Or if you're a builder uh, and he didn't have a spirit level, you would be disappointed. Now, while you don't have to start out with the very best equipment right from the get go, you can't expect to make it as a professional photographer without having to invest invest in some professional level equipment. Now, speed lights and reflectors will take you so far. Um, as your career progresses, you'll find you need more specialized equipment such as filters, studio lights, and specialist lenses, and maybe even additional cameras. 
Now, a good way to test out any equipment before you buy is to simply rent it. This is something that many photographers fail to consider, but it's a great way to try out the equipment that you might need before committing to purchasing it. This way, you'll be able to see the exact results yourself see how it works and see how it feels. And this might mean, for example, whether medium format is better for the type of work you want to do, or whether 35 millimeter, or whether telephoto lenses or portrait lenses, etc., etc. And you can start to get a better idea of what equipment's going to suit your professional practice uh, the most by renting it first and discovering uh, what fits your niche. Number four on my list of things to know is practice. Practice is one of the most important things any aspiring photographer can do. Reading about photography is one thing, even watching photography on our platform and learning about it on our education channel is one thing, but it's totally different to getting out there and actually shooting and practicing shooting. The more you shoot, then the more you'll be able to get to grips with the fundamentals and how your cameras work. The better you understand the basics, the better your images will be. And it will mean that you'll have a stronger portfolio and therefore a greater chance of making it as a pro. Now, I can't stress this enough. Um, the reason top pro photographers are top pros is because they have done a lot of experimental work. They've practiced photography, they've tried different things, they've tried different techniques, and it's through that practice that they've been able to develop their style. Now, it's also important that you take the time to analyze your own work. Take a moment to really look at your own images. How do they compare to other professional photographers? How can they be improved? What could you have done differently? Now, as I pointed out earlier, there is always something more to learn. And when it comes to photography, and you have to be willing to put in the time necessary because when it comes to photography, it is that practice that is going to make a success of your work. Now, if you're looking for ideas, we've got hundreds of classes on Carl Taylor Education that will provide both inspiration and information. But the key thing is to challenge yourself, try new things, experiment with new techniques, or even reattempt old shoots to see if you can improve on images that you previously produced. Not only will practice help you grow your confidence, it will also provide an opportunity to develop your own style and build your portfolio. Number five on my list is be realistic. Now, this is a point that I can't stress enough. Being realistic about the quality of your work is very important because you have to be realistic about the market, your location, the supply and demand. At the end of the day, as with any business, it always comes down to supply and demand. What do the consumers demand and who else is supplying them? Now, over the years, uh, there's no question that supply in the photographic industry has increased dramatically. However, the increase in demand has not necessarily matched this. Now, this means there is often a surplus of supply in the market. Are you going to be another one of these surplus photographers on the market? Or are you going to be at the top of your game to meet that demand? So if you're looking to go pro, you have to be realistic about this. For example, if you're in an area that already has hundreds of wedding photographers uh, all offering their services at competitive rates, you have to consider what are your chances of actually making a success of it in wedding photography. So what can you supply in this already oversaturated market that will make you stand out from the rest? You have to consider who you're able to supply to and what you're able to supply them with. You also have to consider who else is already supplying similar services. Location is another factor, and you have to be realistic about this. A product photographer, for example, based in a remote location, may be putting themselves at a disadvantage if there isn't enough demand in that area. Not every client is going to be able to ship their goods to you to be photographed in the same way it would be unrealistic for the photographer to travel many, many miles to the city to do every job. So be realistic about where you're based and how this will impact the demand for your service. 
And again, because I can't say it enough, you have to be realistic about the quality of your work. Your mum, your uncle and 30 people on Instagram could all absolutely love your images. But if they aren't comparable to other professional photographers work on the market, you have to be realistic about your prospects of winning work. Keep pushing yourself to improve, whether this be a better understanding of light or uh, post-production skills. Never settle for what you think is good enough. Keep trying to upskill yourself and that's where at carltaylereducation.com we can really help. Number six on my list is don't think you know light, no light. Now whether you're shooting with natural light or studio light, the key to any successful image is good lighting. Light can make or break an image. So it's imperative that you not only understand light, but that you also know how to control it. And this is one thing that I pride myself on with my own work uh, and my own experience in controlling light. Now this may simply be knowing what the best time of day to shoot is or a given location uh, or how to use reflectors to maximize or minimize your light, uh, when and how to use filters and when you need to do this. Or if you're in a studio, understanding how to shape light, how it interacts with different surface materials, how the inverse square law works, for example, how reflections work. All of these are important factors. Now, this point also relates back to having the right equipment. You'll struggle to create a soft, even light with just a speed light. But with the right light and a large softbox or a gradient scrim, you'll find you not only have an easier job, but you also are able to be far more creative and far more efficient. So understanding lighting is all about understanding the physics of light, which is what I emphasize throughout our photography training classes. And you can't break those laws of physics. So you have to have a total control over your lighting and a really good grasp of the science behind it so that you can truly apply lighting in a creative way, knowing the fundamentals. To learn more about the physics of light, watch our Introduction and Understanding Light class. This is probably our most popular and in-demand lesson on Carl Taylor Education. I explain everything you need to know about controlling light in that one chapter, and it's the best stepping stone for really mastering light. Now, finally, number seven on my list is get your work out there. Once you've developed a body of work that demonstrates your skills, the key thing is to get it out there. Now, thanks to technology these days, there's endless ways that you can do that, from posting your images on social media to uh, crafting a professional website or even entering photography competitions to raise awareness about your work. So developing your portfolio, your portfolio should be a collection of only your very best work. So it's important that you give due thought and time to this. Online, online portfolios are incredibly popular now thanks to how easy it is to quickly set up your own website. I use a uh, Squarespace uh, Wells template website for my own website as you can see here and I can update it instantly and keep it up to date with my latest work. However, it's still important to keep all of these tips in mind for building your online portfolio. Be your biggest critic when it comes to showing your best work. Try and think critically about your work to help you select your top images. It can be also worth getting a second opinion from other photographers. Be clear and keep things simple. Make sure images display clearly and correctly and that you include your contact details too. Remember, you wanna create a good impression. So try to think of what you would want to see if you were looking to hire someone. Connect with your audience. Now, we recently had a world-renowned product photographer, Jonathan Knowles, on our live talk show, and he gave a great piece of advice. He said that your portfolio should be a reflection of the type of work that you want to do. And I think that resonates really well with me, and I think it should resonate really well with many photographers. Another thing to consider is printing your work. Although we've shifted more towards online, 
printing your work can still be highly effective. A printed portfolio can be a great way to show off your images and it's much harder to forget about that than just another email with your website link. And by that I mean once you've got a printed portfolio or a printed brochure you can submit that printed material out to art directors, out to ad agencies and they really have to pay attention to it whereas an email can be here today and gone tomorrow. Now at the end of the day, the most important thing to remember if you want to become a professional photographer is that your work has to be good enough. Regardless of your profession, it's the quality of the work that you're judged on. You may have a phenomenal understanding of the basic concepts or have outstanding marketing skills, but none of that will matter if your photography work isn't of high enough quality. It's not easy making it as a professional photographer these days, but it is still possible. So take the time, put in the effort into your work, craft your photography, follow your passion, and find the best way of presenting your work. But be realistic too. Think critically about your work and how you can keep improving it. And here at Carl Taylor Education, we're here to help you with that. Now this information is taken from one of our wonderful blog posts on carltaylereducation.com. So if you'd like to see it and absorb it in a written format, head over to carltaylereducation.com and navigate your way to our blog.